All right, so we are on the play here. And interestingly, both Anger of the Gods in the main deck are in our opening hand, but we are gonna still keep and hope to be up against a deck where these are good. And I think it's fine to lead off on the Windswept Teeth. I could see not wanting to play it, and it looks like we're up against Tron. Okay. Um, so we'll see if it's green red Tron or a different type of Tron, but that is going to mean that these Anger of the Gods are almost useless. And the one card that kind of punishes us a little bit for uh, starting on the Woods of Teeth is drawing the Calney Heart Expedition there. But it looks like we're actually up against not Red Green Tron, but some variety of blue tron so i like playing the land out here in case some of these decks actually play cards like condescend and we can attempt to far seek there's also mana leak being represented here remand so this far seek is going to get remanded and that's going to bog us down a little bit we really would like to get the Sakura and Farseek cast, but at the same time, we don't have any of our big payoff cards just yet, so we're kind of forced to play this waiting game that doesn't really favor us, because if our opponent is able to assemble Tron, um, at that point, we're just going to be in a pretty desperate situation, and so there's the Condescend, which I mentioned earlier, and since we didn't have didn't draw another land we are not going to be able to pay for it the scry 2 is going to allow our opponent to really set up here and bang there's the urza's power plant which is the exact card we were afraid of now with our far seek on i think i'm fine with firing off an explorer to try to draw us into something um and okay, so we drew a Valakut, so not the worst draw, but we're still a little ways off from being able to put um, a significant amount of pressure on our opponent with the Valakut, and it looks like our opponent may have something like, okay, so it's going to be a repeal, um, and unfortunately for Colony Heart Expedition, we would need three counters on it to be able to sacrifice it and get those two mountains out of our deck, and we only had two. And here's a copy of Platinum Angel. That's an interesting one. Um, it's not going to straight up win the game by any means for our opponent, but still an annoying beatdown threat on this board. I think we want to just go ahead and get this expedition into play again. Our opponent might have a counter spell for it, but it looks like the answer is no. So just going to pass back. Um, potentially double anger of the gods would be a way to get the platinum angel off the board. We see an oblivion stone getting discarded here to the thirst for knowledge. And the Platinum Angel is actually going to become a real threat because we do, we first of all, we're going to be taking damage from it. Second of all, we would have to get rid of it um, before we win. And now here is an Ugin. So that's just going to go straight at our face. And I'm not sure we're going to be able to do anything about this, unfortunately. Here's a Sakura. So what we can do here is just play out our Sakura Tribe Elders. Um, and then basically hope to draw something like a scape shift on our next turn. And this, this all hinges on our opponent not having any more counter magic. Um, now if we do draw a scape shift 
or possibly even Primeval Titan could be a good draw too. But um, as I was saying, we're very vulnerable to basically anything our opponent could have at this stage. So we're going to be taking another four from the Angel. And even Scapeshift, we, we have to get rid of this Platinum Angel before doing anything else, essentially. Um, the Angel's going to come at us, and that's going to bring us all the way down to five. So this is pretty much our last shot. But here's a Sundering Titan, which is basically going to spoil and ruin uh, most any of our chance of winning the game. So the Sundering Titan looks like it's going to go for a Stomping Grounds and a Mountain. Okay, well, we can go ahead and sacrifice both of our Sakuras. That's going to give us five lands here. We still might be, let's see, it looks like even with the Scape Shift, it's not going to be enough, but let's go ahead, sacrifice our Sakuras. That's going to give us lands to potentially, if we draw Scape Shift, we could um, be able to sacrifice and deal our opponent 18, but since our opponent's at 20, um, that's not going to do it. And the reason why is that this search for tomorrow is going to come out to spend, so we can get a mountain with it. We can also then sac sacrifice the Kalni Hard Expedition, which is going to get us up to seven lands. But actually, since we have Sakura in our hand, that could get us to eight lands if we had an additional untap land, which we don't. So if we draw Scape Shift, we would need to explore into a land and we actually drew the scape shift here so if we're able to explore into a land we could then cast the scape shift and potentially win so let's go ahead cast our explore here and we were able to hit the land so pretty unlikely scenario here so now it's basically down to whether our opponent has a counterspell, I believe. So we're going to put a, another county on the expedition. Then we're going to sacrifice it. And this is going to get us two basic mountains. Then we can sacrifice our wooded foothills here. And let's see. We can go ahead and get Synergalade and then attempt to essentially go for the win here, as crazy as that may seem. So if the escape shift resolves, that would be enough to win us this game, but okay, there is the condescend, so that's going to do it for game one. So what we would have to do, it, if that scape shift were resolved, we would essentially have 36 damage because we would, able to be, we would be able to assemble two Valakuts and then six Mountains coming into play, and then we could deal six to the Platinum Angel and then send the rest to our opponent. But since our opponent had that condescend there right at the end, uh, that plan was not good enough. So let's go ahead and sideboard here a little bit. So we're going to board out our bolts and our anger of the gods. And in exchange... We can board in some of our more mid rangey stuff. So this Tracker comes in, the Courser comes in. We also saw some artifacts. So we can potentially actually board in Ancient Grudge as well. And Lightning Bolt on the... Lightning Bolt is fine if 
against Karn, if our opponent does down tick a Karn, we can then bolt it. So that's a card we can consider. Nature's Claim is basically a worse Ancient Grudge in this matchup, but is not completely um, unplayable. And then Obstinate Bailoff, it's another threat that we have access to. So there's arguments for a lot of these cards. I think we just want a couple of bolts, though. And let's go with this configuration for game two. We saw that our opponent does have access to quite a bit of counter magic. And we're going to keep this hand. We can go turn one, suspend search for tomorrow, turn two, calming, expedi uh, calming heart expedition. So one of our better starts that this deck is capable of procuring. So, yeah, um, hopefully this goes better. Our opponent did take a mulligan, um, and last game our opponent had Tron relatively early. Now, this expedition map also signals that our opponent could have Tron relatively early, and a, an additional copy of Scapeshift, not really what we wanted to draw here, because we do need more lands in order to be able to do what we want to do here. And it looks like our opponent may just be able to get Tron next turn, and essentially will be able to get Tron next turn, because two Tron pieces are in play, and our opponent also has an expedition map sitting there as well. So this search for tomorrow is going to resolve. I think I like just getting a basic far, so that's going to trigger the Calmly Heart expedition. Here's a Cinder Glade. So now we're actually cooking um, because we're going to get our Expedition up to two counters, and then this Far Seek is going to mean that the Expedition has three counters on it. So we can sacrifice the Expedition. And we're going to have at least seven lands on our next turn, assuming that our opponent doesn't play something like a Karn. And so if we do have the seven lands, then it's going to be, do we want to, basically any of these cards are going to be lethal. What we'd like to do is actually just draw another land. But here's a Thought Not Seer. So... I would suspect that, considering we've got two scapeshifts in hand, our opponent's going to take the Primeval Titan and essentially just hope we don't draw another land for the scapeshift, but at the same time, we can still scapeshift on our next turn, and that's still going to be pretty good even if we don't kill our opponent. Except that... The spell sky changes, it's going to change the math on the scape shift a little bit, but I think we still have to go ahead and pop our Calmly Heart expedition here. So we do just really want to draw a land now to be able to get the maximum amount of value off of the scape shift. Unfortunately, we did not draw a land. We drew an additional scape shift. Hmm. So the question is do we want to fire one copy of scape shift off here? Um, it doesn't put us in a bad spot, but it's also not going to be for lethal damage. Our opponent can redirect the triggers to the spell skite, which is pretty annoying. Whereas if we had an eighth land in play, we could just go for the win here. Um, huh. 
this is a pretty tough spot. If we get the mountains, we can get rid of our opponent's spell skite. And it just doesn't seem that great. I think we can I think we can afford to wait here and hope to draw our eighth our eighth land. And the, the nice thing about this play is that we're the eighth land is fine even through one counter spell. So okay, so we drew the eighth land. Now we can go for the scape shift here. And we might as well float additional mana so that once the scape shift resolves, we can actually cast a second scape shift if we want to. So our opponent's basically stuck. With only one blue mana, um, basically there's not going to be a way for our opponent to counter this. And so we're just going to go ahead and sacrifice our lands here and get two Valakuts and then go for the rest being mountains. And I like the way we did this because had we gone for the other line, we wouldn't have had that many mountains left in our deck. So now all of the Valakits are going to come into play. And this is a lot of triggers that are happening. So we count them. It's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 triggers. So it's actually too much for our opponent to be able to live through because our opponent can pay 2 life for each of these triggers to redirect them all to the Skype, the Spell Skype. But then our opponent's still going to be taking lethal. It basically means that our Valakuts are dealing two to our opponent instead of three, but even dealing two for each of the triggers is enough for lethal. So we're just going to go ahead and put all of these Valakut triggers onto the stack. And I suspect that that's just going to do it. Our opponent's not going to... Our opponent can pay one blue for a free redirection, but after that, there's nothing to be done. So that is going to force game three here. And since we saw multiple artifacts, I think even though we have Ancient Grudge, we might also want Nature's Claim in our deck for game three. We can take out the Lightning Bolts, and I think we still want the rest of our cards. Um... So, yep, let's go ahead and go with this for game three. And we are going to be on the draw, so we really, really, really don't want to see turn three Tron when our opponent's on the play. That's that's going to be real bad. Karn has, has yet to show up yet, so that's one of the cards I'm definitely more worried about because it can just go after our lands. And land destruction is one of the best ways to attack our deck. So I'm going to lead off on Valakut um, just because it, it comes into play tapped and we want to be able to curve out if possible. And okay, so here's an explore. So we could fire off the explore. I think though I like going with Farseek. To start off, our opponent's representing counter magic, even though it looks like our opponent did not have a counter here. So, just going to go ahead, search up a stomping grounds, and pass the turn here. 
and so we're kind of got one of our got a reasonable draw here, and we drew an expedition. So I like playing that, and we can try to go for either escape shift or just a Valka kill. And the expedition is going to start accumulating counters pretty quickly. Here's the Sakura. So it looks like our opponent either doesn't have counter magic or is choosing not to counter this stuff and is going to try to fight over something else. Now, we see that our opponent does not have Tron immediately, but does have Thought Knots here. So this Thought Knot can take our escape shift, which is pretty annoying. Uh, but we, we're, we can definitely just sacrifice the Sakura Tribe Elder. Expect the escape shift to be hit here, but the Kalni Heart Expedition is going to be able to get popped soon, and we're going to be able to get multiple Valakuts into play, so... This may not work the as well as our opponent thinks, even though our escape shift is gone. So we can go ahead and fire off a copy of Explore here. And that's going to allow us to play multiple lands. So I like getting our Valakut into play first. So let's do that. And then we can play the mountain that our opponent already knows about, which is the Stomping Grounds. So now we've got four mountains in play, essentially, and we can sacrifice our Colony Heart Expedition. And now, when we get these two mountains out of our deck, we're going to get four Valica Triggers, which is a bunch of Valica Triggers. And we're definitely going to send at least two of them at our opponent. And I think I like using the other ones to get rid of the Thought Knots here. Although it is close, but we're relatively likely to just hit a ramp spell or some sort of gas off the Thought Knots here dying. So I'm fine with just getting rid of it because it is going to allow us to draw a card, and it's going to help preserve our life total. And then we're going to just send these other six damage at our opponent's face. And that's going to be it for our land drops for the turn, but a pretty impressive turn altogether there. And now we can untap, play a Cinder Glade. That's going to deal our opponent six damage and now we have a search for tomorrow which we can just cast here and i'm fine with casting it here because it dodges cards like condescend which our opponent could easily have so we only have two basic mountains left but we also have Two in our hand. So we've got one basic mountain, I think, left in our deck. But our opponent's now all the way down to two. It's hard to see now what combination is going to allow our opponent to stay in this. We saw a Platinum Angel, but we could just kill a Platinum Angel with just playing one mountain here. Although, okay, here's Ugin. So it looks like our opponent assembled Tron and then cast Ugin, but that's really not going to be enough. We're going to be able to finish this game off with our final land. Not our final land, but another mountain, and we're not going to redirect it, and that's going to do it.